You are listening to the 8% Nation podcast, created to help you become a top producer in the insurance industry. Enjoy the show. Welcome to the 8% Nation podcast, where this podcast is dedicated to help you as an insurance agent, producer, businessman, whatever it is, succeed and be part of the 8%. Cody, bro, yo, just got you back in town you did, from man. Vegas. All right. How, how was your trip? It was good, man. It was good. All, all I have to say is 8% Nation 2020, forget 10x. Dude, this thing may 100x. Just the overall idea and experience, it's going to be insane. We're going big. So you're, t- oh. t- tell, us, tell us what you're doing on Vegas you're real quick. Going big is an understatement. Good. You're just scoping out venues? Yep. You able to give any teasers? There's one that uh, I really like. So that's a teaser. That's a, yep. That with, with a super nice big theater. Yep. Yep. With like floor access for certain people, you know, meet and greets with speakers, the works. Good. It's one's three stories that I like. Well, I'll tell you, um, I can't wait. I hear there's a lot of hype. We got a ton of good feedback from this last year and everyone's like already getting tickets and it's awesome. It's awesome. So, um, we are now leaving tomorrow morning at 7.30 to go to Tennessee. What are we doing in Tennessee, bro? That's the 8% Monster Retreat with your boy Landon McCarter, the super coach, Michael Burt, and myself. Yep. I'm going to be breaking down. I'll give you a little teaser, Cody, what I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to be breaking down a major Medicare website and giving the pieces of how it's successful on Google, why it's successful on Google, and how to beat them. Ooh. So what you're saying is you should not have missed this. Yeah. So I'm going to basically say everybody looks to this particular website, who I'm not going to call it on this podcast, mm. as a industry leader. And when I dug in and looked at what they're actually doing, um, it's not rocket science. And I'm going to break it down. And I'm going to give them all the pieces to understand if they wanted to, how to recreate this and, and beat them on Google. It's not rocket science. Wow. So I love that. I'm going to go through it all top to bottom. You're the... Uh... So, so when you draw the Google man, the stick man, when we do like retreats that's and stuff, me. you have the board. That's yeah, you, isn't yeah. it? That's you. Yeah. No, we uh, we holding the basketball. There you go, Duncan. Google man, Duncan. There you go. So we we really the thing that I love about this industry is so I came from the previous advertising world that was not specialized in insurance. So yeah. I, and and I had to work with some of these major you know brands and and just uh, big businesses, and the big websites that we had to beat on Google were a hundred times what I'm seeing as like the best quote unquote website in the insurance industry. Yeah. So it's just like a, an easy target to hit. And I think people just need to understand what goes into a, a big, nice website that gets a lot of organic traffic and that's on the breakdown. So it's going to be a lot of good, a yeah. lot of good, a lot of fun. Um, we're going to be locked in a retreat for two days to learn this stuff. It's amazing what you can learn. What, this is what people in the insurance industry don't get yet. What you can learn at a two day retreat and be so far ahead of so many other people in the industry, yeah. that's just silly to me. It's fun, and I and I hope you guys can join us on the future retreats because we ain't gonna stop. It's a lot of fun. Those are one of my favorite things that we do. Can't stop, right? won't stop. But that's not the focus of our podcast yeah. today. Okay, so what I like to do is, is, I mean, so just for instance. It's easy for us to find topics to talk about. Oh my gosh, well, here's how I like to find them. So this, this today, I have seven meetings on the schedule. Right. Yesterday, I had seven meetings on the schedule. And, and, and explain those. They're all marketing. Well, meetings. they're all marketing meetings. They're People all wanting help with their marketing. Either Medicare, yeah. final expense, recruiting. You do LTC. about forty of those a week. Yeah, probably sometimes probably, fifty. Probably well, that's fifty that's if 10, you that's count. That's ten a day. Probably not ten a day. Probably yeah. more like seven or eight a day. Okay, so unless 30, I work Saturday, sometimes I work Saturdays. Yeah, um, absolutely, we do. Come on. Well. There's just when only you're so on many, the lake. There's only so many appointment slots. <laughs> when you're you not know? wake surfing. Yeah, no doubt. And you're so, dragging me out there. Ugh, but it's so fun. It's so fun. Um, but so my point is, is that I'm taking these meetings all throughout the day. And part of my meeting is just discovery, right? It's what are you doing? What can I help you with? Whatever. Warming and, up and fact finding. Yeah. Right? And so I end up talking to all these like awesome producers all the time. And so what I try to do with this podcast is I try to say, you know what? I've been getting asked a lot about this. Let's talk to Cody about it because what I like to do is to say, you know what? I'm not the insurance expert necessarily, although I, I'm the insurance Coming marketing expert. quickly though. Yeah, well, I, I'm not licensed. I'm not an insurance agent, but I really yeah. know how to market, you know, but Cody is the insurance expert over there. So I figured I'd have you speak on a topic that I'm getting multiple times in the last several days. And that is, I want to talk about cross-selling products. Mm-hmm. And I want to talk about 
I feel like some of my bigger clients that are more successful, they'll go into a final expense appointment and whether they get final expense or not, they're typically pivoting to other types of products and cross selling mm -hmm. and all that. So, you know, can you give me like a 10,000 foot view of how we should look at cross selling products and how that should look, how that should look for us? Yeah. I mean, it, it varies because you've got a lot of, you've got some veteran agents that are looking for certain types of business and maybe, maybe the types of business they're looking for isn't easy to find, you know, let's just use like an annuity, for example. Um, annuity business, you know, that, that kind of stuff. Uh, but you've also got some newer agents, maybe the, you know, maybe they're focused on one product and they're selling a niche, which is great. But a lot of times we're able to, you start with final expense, pivot and sell Medicare as well. Or there's a lot of times we're able to focus on Medicare and then pivot and add like long-term care or, or an annuity, you know, or that's why a lot of people do events. Like a lot of times the event they do is not even like they may do a social security event, you know, tax, retirement income, stuff like that. They're not looking to help people with social security. Yeah. They're looking to help people manage their money and, 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 and create an income stream for life, you know, those type of things. So that's where there's always, there's not always a, you know, additional revenue piece or like an underlying piece that they're looking for. It is not always the case, but in a lot of cases it is. So when should you be looking to cross sell and when shouldn't you be looking to cross sell? Uh, Okay, uh, not everyone has to. Um, certain people want to. Certain people actually don't, and certain companies don't, and that's okay too. Uh, but if you're a if you're a single final expense producer out there, and you're running into people that have Medicare, and you're not helping them while you're in the home, you know, and adding an extra maybe one cell a week, you know, fifty cells, add an extra twenty five k a year in re residual income every year. Three years down the road, you maybe you know could have added seventy five hundred k in re renewal income that you didn't grab. Yeah. Um, that's the only time where I'm like start thinking that way because I was a only life producer my first few years, you know, and I was in a different scenario where I kind of like had to pivot and had to do some different things. It really varies. It really does. Like we talked to so many different agents and offices and stuff, and I know this is a bad answer. It's like one time you talk to them and it's like oh no, and the next time you talk to them it's like oh yeah, you know. It's just, it, it's crazy. So do you feel like, is, is there sort of a newer agents probably shouldn't focus on cross-selling? Like, like, or they should? Uh, yeah, that's also funny. It depends on which, like if you've got all these agency owners and uplines and managers and, you know, et cetera, et cetera, like all bosses and owners, and they will, the opinions will differ so much. It's, okay. it's insane. Well, what's your opinion? Yeah, in, in my opinion, I think a newer agent needs to niche down and focus on a target and hit that and get really good at hitting that before you get too complicated, get in the weeds too much. Most people are like, and I, I like the idea of it, but most people want to know too much before they, successful people are not wired that way. They don't have to know everything before they become successful. So certain people are like wired that way where you have to know everything before you do anything. And it's like, if that's the case, which is most people are that, most new agents are that way actually then why would I complicate it by adding additional? Yeah, options? analysis paralysis. Yeah, exactly. So, okay, so let's, and then they okay. don't end up selling anything. So new, newer agents should probably focus in on a niche, whether it's final expense, Medicare, yeah, live, whatever. Keep it simple to start at yeah. least. So when, when, does, when, do you, when does an agent become into that next sort of level to level up into what, maybe potentially adding a arrow to their quiver? Well, most, most of the time when it's become a well-oiled machine that they can rely on and they're like, okay, you know, um, Maybe they've got a uh, somebody in their office that sells annuities, and they can like set up meetings for them and get half the business. Or maybe they've got a agents that they want to help that sell Medicare. Maybe they are like, okay, you know, I'm sitting down with these people. I might as well be fact finding and asking a couple additional questions. Like that's easy, you know. A lot of a lot of people will will cross sell for other agents to where they'll like they don't sell P and C, they sell life and health, but they'll ask if, if it's okay if I give you a free quote for your home and auto, see if we can save you some money because they're looking to give a, ref they have referral partners and they want to give a referral to that referral partner and vice versa. So what, what is a, let's just brass tacks. What does a well-oiled machine look like? Is that like when, when as a single producer, you get 75 K income and then it starts. I always thinking. think about like Ryan and Eric and Spike and all these yeah. guys, you know, that's like, it's just, it's, 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 this business, it's really easy to be inconsistent and it to feel like a roller coaster. Okay. If you feel like what you're doing is at least typically consistent in some way, and I'm not saying down to the penny every week, but at least you're looking at like, you know, so many sets, so many sits, so many cells, 
and yeah, it varies, but like a general, like Joey, you know, general consistency, then that seems like a weld machine. Not that you couldn't just pump it and start increasing that before you add, because you could. But I think that the, the answer isn't as easy because some agents just need to just keep focusing on what they're doing. Yeah, I, I just seem there seems to be a hunger out there. And I guess my question is, I want to clear up, is it a misconception to think that if they're not cross-selling, they're leaving a bunch of money on the table? Is that a misconception? It's not a misconception. But but also, there's there's final expense. There's term. There's IULs. There's annuities. There's long-term care. There's med subs. There's med advantage. There's group health, individual health. There's employee benefits. There's commercial insurance. There's home insurance. There's auto insurance. You know what I mean? You see the point. There's like 82 freaking ways to succeed in this yeah, business. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and and there's, okay, yeah, there's a dozen different product types, whatever. Really, there's really more than that when you start niching it down even further. But then even below that, you know, there's the 17 different ways to succeed in that product type. You know, okay. it's, it's just like there's just so many paths. And sometimes new agents never know what path to go down. And then it's real easy to be a part of the 92% because they just didn't go down a path at all because they were just so overwhelmed. Okay. So what, what, what are some positive ways to cross sell? Like what are some ways that you feel are the smart way to do it? Besides if, just waiting till your well oiled machine. If there's like a natural, easy product to add while you're sitting with someone. How do you identify that natural, easy product to add? If you're sitting with a target market that can also use help, like if you're sitting with a lot of people uh, that are 65 to 75 and talking to them about life insurance, you know, and if, and if you're okay adding that niche in that option, then it's an easy question to ask. You know, I'm assuming that you have Medicare. Be, yeah, who, Medicare. Who do you have your Medicare with? Okay. You know? Do you typically, so let's talk about the details. So let, let's just say. The same thing, same thing could be said with larger life policies and looking for long-term, you know, people in their 50s and 60s looking for long-term care and annuity opportunities, okay. you know, 401k rollovers. Or a lot of people do medic, turning 65 Medicare seminars, but they would prefer to write some big life policies, big long-term care policies, big annuities as well. Um, some work with business owners. We didn't even talk about that yet. We never really do. But some, some work with business owners and they're looking for, you know, maybe they're going in about life or health insurance, but they're really looking for benefits. You know, it's like you, you just, you don't know. Got it. So, okay. So let's just take an easy, natural, simple cross-selling opportunity. So like, it seems like a lot of final expense agents are also cross-selling Medicare. You could be selling a 69 year old, um, a lot of different products. Okay. Okay. So what, you know, have you, have you ever cross sold? Yeah. Personally? So yeah. when did you pull that out of your pocket? Was it after the sale? Okay. So I want to get brass tacks. So yeah. I, I want to talk. So you, it's a, you, yeah, that's a good question. So it's a really good question. You really have a breakdown of your appointment very clearly in a lot of your training. You've done hundreds of hours of videos on this. Yep. So we, let's just say you're, you're, you're normally sitting down with a prospect for an hour at a time, right? Yeah, approximately. So walk me yeah. through yeah, yeah. when you break out the cross sell. I like work? the cross sell at about ten to tw- ten to fifteen minutes in. Between the warm, if I'm going to add cross selling, I like to add it between the warm up and the fact find, and make it almost part of the fact find. That's between steps one and two, and I love. I, I did a video on it. Literally, if you haven't seen it, you need to go back and watch it. I did a video, Dylan, the vet, Medicare or, or the money bag presentation. Oh yeah. It was like two weeks ago, yeah, a week and a half ago, 10 days ago, whatever. I don't know when this will drop, maybe next week, so maybe two weeks ago or whatever. Um, and I laid that out perfectly, that you're, you're sitting with someone. That's a great way to fact find. And I like transitioning that into the fact finding portion. I really do. And, and, and so most people would do it at the end. Well, they're, they've been sitting with me for an hour and a half. They're like ready to move on. Yeah, they you're bought. almost starting over. Yeah, you're starting over. Or some... We'll wait until they deliver the policy. It's because some will still hand deliver policies to the clients, and then they'll sit down with them and fact find. I like to kind of start at the conversation up front, so it doesn't feel like I'm always trying to sell them something. Then I'm yeah. like adding stuff on, or every time yeah. I talk to them, I've got to be selling them something. I like to add. I like to take the approach of okay, you know, I'm a, I'm I'm, I'm in you know I'm an insurance advisor or whatever you want to call it, uh, and you know these are several things that are important to our clients. You know, there's areas of concern for each one of our clients. Some have more concerns here. Some have more concerns here. Some have more concerns here. And it's my job to sit with you to educate you on what's available, help you with getting, you know, whatever you're looking to accomplish today. We do it. But also let you know that, you know what, I may, I, I can typically help in other ways too. 
And that's where it kind of leads into that money back presentation. Okay. So what I've always understood or tried to have the analogy on not insurance sales, but sales in general is when you walk into the doctor's office, you know, they're not walking in, looking at you up and down and writing you a prescription. Yeah. They're asking you questions. They're figuring it out. And, you know, from my perception is, is that if we genuinely want to help people, like, okay, that's what we're actually trying to do. Mm -hmm. We're not just trying to sell them products. Then it may be unwise to, you know, completely leave that out at the beginning of the fact find and just pummel down one product into their throat. Yeah. You know, and, and not only is it leaving money on the table, but it's also potentially not doing what's best, you know, for the client. But there is a school of thought that it's like, and, and, and you still need to, whether you add this or not, you know, whether you do it, whether you think about it, you know, whether you're already doing it, whatever, whether you do it as ref for referral partners or anything else, there's still the element of, um, you still started with, it, it's, it, they always say riches are in the niches and we're not taking away from working a niche. You work a niche, but while you're working the niche, that's how you get in front of people. And then you may be, you know, looking for another opportunity as well. There is another trap I feel that I've heard, you know, chase two rabbits, catch none. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Where, you know, you, you don't want to, there is, you know, the grass is always greener where you're like, well, you know what? I'm not cross selling and I need to do more of that. And all of a sudden you're screwing up your whole flow. That's the danger of this business is just like, yeah, there's a lot going on. Yeah. What about, what about telesales versus field sales? Is it easier to cross sell one or the other? I believe it's easier to cross sell in the field. Uh, I'd really believe that, but that doesn't mean that there aren't some that may do. It's easier if you're doing a telesale, it's easier to like, it's less of a cross sell and a fact find and more of like a bundle of like, hey, here's the package we offer kind of Interesting. thing. Interesting, okay. Because it's just simple to explain. Like you don't want to go through, okay, you know, it's, it's just easier because you go through four different products and like start stacking and before you know it, it's like, there's too much information, analysis, paralysis, like, okay, you get, you, you get, if you give them too much, they're not going to make a decision. Yep. I need them to make a decision or I'm not going to make a sell. We need to get Justin Brock on this podcast to talk through his bundling and all that. Yeah. So, because totally. I know he's really good at that. Um, for sure. He's for got sure. a course just on that. Yeah. yeah. Bundling and all he that. He does. But it's mostly Medicare bundling, right? Yeah. 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 True. True. Um, well, okay. So, you know, I guess we've kind of talked through, you know, some, some dangers. We have a few more minutes. What I'd like to maybe, is there anything else like valuable when he, whenever the topic comes up of cross selling, is there anything else that's like really valuable for our listeners, whether they're new and agent or veteran that we should talk about? Like, is there anything that I'm missing in terms of having asked a question for? Or? Don't complicate it until you've, you may never totally master it. So I shouldn't say, in, but at least until you get like good at what you're doing, okay. you need to be good at selling. If you sell disability income, you know, yeah, there's definitely cross sell opportunities. There always is for every every clientele, but you need to get really good at selling that first. Go and complicate it and like go broke. Okay, so you're just analyzing everything and you're not ever doing anything. Let's set some benchmarks. So when you close forty percent of your meetings, thirty percent of your meetings, we're ready to then well, that's add all, it to a, a add it to a mix. It's hard for me to add a close rate because there's some agents that will never have the close rate that some other agents do. Never. True. I don't care how long they're in this business. Like yeah. they are, they don't have the same personality. Yeah. They don't have the same closing ability. They're not naturally assumptive, confident, and assertive. You yeah. know. Yeah. So really, I'm trying to make a complex issue more simple than it I is. I can see that. <laughs> uh, I can see that. Well, well and I don't want to. I don't want to. If confuse you people. want to, and you feel like there's a need, and it's something that you you're leaving on the table, and you think you should. Okay. Then, um, let's at least. You know what? I think the I think the easiest way to explain it is let's at least get the weekly system down, okay. Where we're getting in front of people consistently, before we like start complicating it too much. Okay. Because if you're not getting in front of people, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter what. That's really where I'm yeah. going. Doesn't it's matter. The prospecting, what... the marketing. Yeah, yeah. So once you get that figured out, then it's time to like think through it. Dude. So like in general, so let's just call it like, and I'm like hammering this because I feel like For people. Sure. Well, people need help. Like, I've had three conversations in the last 48 hours about. When should I cross sell? Should I get final expense leads or Medicare? Tell Andy we need to do a webinar on this. Yeah. I could do a whole webinar on cross selling. Let's do it. Well, the question I'm getting is, is should I start with Medicare and then go final expense? Should I start with final expense and then go Medicare? I know I want to do both, but I'm just confused. What should I do? And I'm like, I'm just the marketing dude. Yeah. Like I will give you whatever leads you want, but like maybe Cody can speak to this on our podcast. You should tune in. That's kind of happened multiple times. So, okay. But I, I feel well, like. Hopefully at least added some clarity a yeah, little bit, yeah. you know. Well, and, and I want to. There's not a prescription for all true true 
So um, this was maybe a shorter podcast than, than normal. That's okay. We're trying to move to the weekly format instead of every other week. Next week is Remiz, which I'm super stoked about. Be exciting. Actually, it has to be two weeks from now by the time this, this, yeah. this goes live. Yeah, next um, Thursday or whatever. But thanks for joining us and dropping some knowledge bombs, man. Dude, you got it, man. That was, uh, what, 20 minutes or so? Yeah, 25 20, minutes? 25. So I feel, I feel good about the content. Obviously, you guys could leave comments. We check all of our comments. If you have any additional questions, I do think this is a webinar topic. It'd be awesome to break, totally. break it down. Totally, yes. Yeah. All right. Thanks for joining us, guys. Um, is there any other questions you got? How many marketing clients can you handle? Sheesh. Well, we just hired a couple people, so that'll help. There we go. All right. Um, all right, guys. Have a good afternoon. Talk to you next time. <laughs>